All right, let's start here with another live session for you guys. Today we're playing 500 Zone on Bodog. Bodog belongs to the same player pool that Ignition and Bovada players play. So these games are very, very good. There's plenty of recreationals. The recreationals here are crazy. So hopefully we're gonna be able to make some money and play some fun hands. Let's get into it. The pool right now has 17 players. So not very full, but also, you know, there's going to be plenty of action for sure. There's going to be lots of regs, but I could already spot a few recreational. So we got the small blind here with 40 bigs on his stack. This guy's certainly a regular here, opening for 2.4 big blinds. Flop is king, queen, six. On this flop, I'm gonna play quite small and check. I think that's a good strategy. And well, mostly almost betting my whole range here, actually. That's what he does. He tanks, 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 finds a raise. That's interesting. I'm gonna go with a call here. Not much I can do other than that. King is interesting. I might have some leads here on the king due to having a lot of ace king in my range and also my opponent should have significant number of air hands now, but checking is also fine. He checks back. So his range is very, very, very weak here. I can either check and hope that he bluffs or I can back quite tiny, hoping that he will try to do something weird here. Ace 10 for betting and I got snap calls. When I get snap called, not feeling great about this. I'm going to check on this mono board. He's gonna have way more flushes than I will on these mono textures. So I'm gonna check back. He checks fairly, fairly quickly. Hmm. I'm gonna go check and bluff river, but Betting on the turn already should be a fine play. Let's see if my auto top up is working. Doesn't seem like it is. Big blinders button here. I'm gonna check call, or perhaps check raise ace 10 plus sometimes out of frequency. He has three quarter. Really six spot already for him to be value betting. He needs to have some kind of ace queen plus with the spade blocker, uh, with the spade draw here. If he bets, I'm going to. He goes for an over bet. Over bets are definitely over bluff in this spot, but. You know, mono board is high. I'm just gonna fold. I'm gonna block at the river here with the pocket sevens. Actually, I could I could bet bigger actually with this pocket sevens. I think. And even need to block. An easy call versus raise. You could even have a six here, raising for value. So I have to call. Ten eight. I can play a number of different strategies. I can bet large. I can bet small. I can check. All are reasonable in my opinion. Ace ten. I'm going to fold. It's a fine hand to four bet sometimes. I'm going to raise some times here on King Queen, King Queen Deuce. 
the spot where people are going to be betting their entire range and then they're going to struggle to defend against raises. As played, I can better check. At RNG 91, I'm fine with checking this sometimes. It's not like I can go for stacks with such a weak flush. So I can check here. Let's see what he does on the river. He checks. Checked rather quickly. So people already struggle to defend their checking range in this spot and put enough, enough traps. And then when he when he snap checks, I think that range is very, very bluff catcher heavy. And then if he raises, I'm just gonna snap call. I three bet be my small blind guess is ace five five rainbow board. I think I can choose to bet quite tiny here. Yeah, I think quite tiny is fine. He calls. Turns a four. I think it's a pretty straightforward check. Hmm, interesting river. He has plenty of broadways to bluff here with. He doesn't have any 9x to bluff, and I have the 9 of hearts. So I think it's a reasonable calling hand and also a reasonable raising hand. I'm gonna go ahead and raise small here, trying to represent the ace. I think calling is also fine, but this should probably be part of the equilibrium strategy, and I have no reason to believe that against population of this raise is going to perform worse. So I like going for the raise there. I think that's a good play. Overall, whenever I'm in doubt between an aggressive and a passive strategic option, I will choose the aggressive strategic option. I think that performs best long term against humans. That's what I like to do. Ace Queen Nine here, we're gonna go big bet or check. I think it's indifferent here. You don't need to bet all the time. You don't need to check all the time. Whatever you want to do here is totally fine. My opinion on this turn, I do have a kicker that plays so I can delay here. I think a small size is fine. I want to put pressure on some King highs, nine X type hands. He quickly calls, doesn't seem like he considered raising, so I can rule out a lot of queen X's from his reign, which basically means my hand is the effective nuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and add pot. Pot is good. Pocket nines here. Ah, I was going to raise. I was going to raise that pocket nines with diamond on the river. It's a pretty good play there. Unfortunately, didn't have the time to do it. 7-5 diamonds here, button versus big blind. This short stacked leads on the flop. Pretty sure it's a recreational. I'm gonna raise here with top pair and a gutter. His range is gonna be filled with air. I can get protection and then some thin value. As played, I'm just gonna check back and call rivers. He's gonna get here with plenty of air. So I can just call any bet on the river apart from <laughs> I was going to say, apart from some very large bets, I think it's the same guy that I played before that back very quickly on the river. So I think this is more of something that he does rather than an actual read. That's why I made the call there. I generally don't like bluff catching much against large bets from recreationals, but this guy was extremely volatile. He did the same thing like a few orbits before. So it stops being some significant evidence of of a strong hand and starts being more like something that he does quite often. <laughs> That's a practical application of bias theorem there. If you're not applying bias theorem to your own game plan, like every single session, you're leaving tons and tons of money at the table. That's all I'm gonna say. You have to update your beliefs about how your opponents are playing based on the new evidence you acquire. That's how you should do it. And sometimes, you know, 
depending on the level of the evidence, you should adjust a lot your, your strategy and how you're playing. So, you know, take all the information in, absorb everything, interpret everything. That's how you make the most money. Queen 8 4 2 tone, gonna go large bet or check against two players. Uh, you know, when, you, when you're facing two players, it doesn't really matter what you do because, you know, it's, it's gonna be very close in EV. I like to bet because, as I said, I prefer going with the more aggressive action. I think it makes me more in control and more comfortable playing the more aggressive action. So I would generally choose that. But if you wanted to check that hand, I think that's totally, totally fine. Three bet ace king here. The guy snapped four bets, about 30 blinds. This is going to be some sort of recreation. I have to stick it in here. His range is going to be quite strong, but I guess the size, I can't really do anything. I have to put the money in. And we split the pot. Well, we actually paid tons of rake. Tons of rake, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, Queen 8, we're gonna mostly call. Let's see, yeah. Mostly call. We may float this game small size. King 10, I got three bets sometimes. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna float against the sizing. And hopefully, Love some rivers. King 10 off from the a7-4. Wow, it looks really close. I'm gonna float again. It's an abort where he should bet his entire range on. So I think I'm gonna get extra realization from substantial checkbacks on the turn. I could have lead this turn as well. And now it's played, I'm just gonna check and potentially raise against the bet. With Queen A, you have to fold. Yeah, I think on that on that previous hand with King 10 off, King High is gonna be pretty decent check raise candidates in that spot. Villain's not gonna be reopening King High, so we unblock that folds. And we're also blocking the strongest over pair, strongest under pair is gonna have. So yeah, I think King High's check raise in there is pretty good. Through about this king queen here. 13 blinds is my sizing, big blind or button. Two high cards is really good to have here. Block means continues. He thinks for a little bit and then calls. Hope to say seven five. I can bet quite tiny and check here. That's in fact what I'm going to do. I could also check with this hand. That would be totally okay. Turns a king. I could go for a small bet, but I think I should polarize a little bit more here. So I'm gonna check. He very quickly checks back. It's interesting. I think his range is going to be more pocket pair heavy when he does that. So I can either block or check. I'm gonna go for the check. Wow, it has ace jack. Wow, the guy's so tight. See how quickly he checks the river? That's insane. Playing as a recreation on the left here. He checks back the turn. I'm gonna go for the check raise here, hoping that he bluffs with some of his heirs, that he value bets his queens. And then I'm gonna put a check raise in. I think something like that is good. Snap calls, probably had a queen. 7 4 dude's gonna go medium or check. Strong king high, mostly go to the checking range, I believe. And then, wow, he snap checks the turn. Interesting. My hand is probably a pure check at equilibrium. I can delay plenty of strong ace highs here. Basically, ace 10 plus here, I think. He bats river and he does quite quickly. I think I'm going to raise. I'm gonna call a raise, I think both are fine. He's got the king three. Sixty blinds deep here, I'm going to three bet the ace jack. Try to play post flop against Rack. He calls, flop 866. 
check calling is good. Pocket nines here, bet smaller check. I'm gonna go for the check. Against the rack, bets three quarter. I think I have to fold against three quarter. And pocket nines, very easy check call against the third. Very raggish sizing here. We have to continue against the turn double barrel. That's relatively fast, which just doesn't make me happy at all. I think these nap bats are going to be a little bit more skewed towards value. Then there's a 10 on the river. I do get heat with 10x, 10, 8, 10, 9 type hands. Villain bets like super small. Well, I'm gonna call this, but this is screaming some kind of 10x as desperate for. What? Jack this? Oh my god. Scratch everything that I said. <laughs> I was playing against a fucking wreck. That's insane. And see how this pool is crazy. Like you see some insane recreationals, a lot of short stack players, you know. King Jack suited against three X from the button. So this is usually gonna be a recreational. I'm going to three back here. It doesn't need to be very large because it's calling anyway. You see how he snap called. So the snap call against three bat is a very clear indication of recreational behavior recreational players do this a lot what i'm going to do here is play a line that i really love playing which is betting small on the flop and then checking and letting them blast off recreationals blast off like crazy on this line check back the turn pretty quickly so unfortunately i don't think he has too much air here so what i'm going to try to do here is extract value from the very weak portion of his range like the low pairs and also make sure that he's going to raise with some bluffs like he did here. And so we call and he's got 9-7 offsuit. <laughs> All right, let's go. So I really like these very tiny bats because they allow me to get value from two regions, a very weak showdown value type region, like low pocket pairs and stuff. And then also allows me to get value from those air that they're going to mindless mindless the raise so i really like those tiny bats in the river for value checking would also be fine it's a similar similar idea if you check you can get value from those those air hands that are gonna bluff but you lose a little bit of value against those uh weakish sort of value hands that are going to be checking back so i like the tiny bats in the river recreational here probably opening the button i'm gonna call with ace twos off despite the fact that it's opening for 3x because the edge you can generate post flop against recreational is massive so i do think you should be calling here and i don't say this out of just intuition i have done some mathematical models to calculate how much average how much edge we can generate post flop by playing against recreationals and then seeing which hands i can make profitable due to that extra edge and i think ace deuce is one of those hands i think you can call any ace x obviously there against the 3x from a recreational okay guys we got three bet here against cut off rag we are trying to be blinds deep though so i guess i'm gonna call actually trying to be deep against a rag it's not pocket jacks is not going to be a very clear three bet so i think it's fine to to call Turn, I'm going to go for a large-ish bet. About pot seems fine to me. He calls and ace is... I'm going to block here. I don't think he has too many ace acts in his range, honestly. Yeah, he might have some ace acts of hearts, but most of his most of his hands are going to be like wickish. Wickish 10x. Ah, it's so cool close against hijack no this is big blind okay i thought it was big blind versus hijack yeah so he had pocket nines yes he's gonna have hands like that like 10 7 10 9 some kind of 6 7 yeah king 7 i might turn into a bluff here no i don't think i should turn into a bluff let's see what he does it's jack 10 okay 
Opening A7, I'm gonna go medium or check of 653. I think anything is fine here. I like to play checks on these boards, allow me to have one extra piece of information about people's ranges when they when they lead or they check into me on the turn. He goes for a small size. I'm gonna go for a raise here. Have a pretty good hand to raise. I need raises in the spot because I'm gonna have some overpairs that I'm gonna want to raise there. So I like putting pressure in that situation. Thirteen blinds. Good call. Snap checks the flop. I'm gonna go for a small bat here. And a four bet the king queen off. I'm gonna barrel the ace jack. You want to check call it flop quickly, check call it turn quickly. I'm just gonna give up here. <laughs> Pocket sevens, Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. You know, quick plays are generally strong hands. Check a four two tone. Gonna play over better check. It's such a weak kicker. I'm mostly gonna be checking. S played. I'm going to be delaying here, and I'm gonna take advantage of. They split out a breed that I have on population, which is the fact that I don't think they trap sufficiently often on these turns. So I'm going to be betting the turn looking to bomb those rivers, expecting his range to be quite weak. And yeah, I'm just going to go for a pot here on the river. I think that's fine. Still dominate some, some two pairs. Bones. King J3 2 Tom gonna play big bat or check, jack 10, too weak, pretty easy check. On the ace, I think a pure check here is appropriate. On the river, just checking down. Guys, <laughs> we're awesome. <laughs> uh, these wrecks, man, they are insane. 17 players right now in the pool. Guys, snap calls here. I mean, I do think to think that snap calls are more towards recreational. So you see that like snap calling the flop. I can barrel or I can check here. I'm going to check this time. Let's see what he does. He bets quite small. I'm going to call again super small. I'm gonna check him on a low board here. Not a board where I should have too many C bets. Tanks, 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 and that's small. I think that's straightforward check call. Should probably reserve my check raises for sets and then some hands with a spade. I have Jack Hall the turn if he bets the outs to Foo House. He checks behind. His range is quite, quite weak at this point. I'm going to. Yeah, same thing. Like, I can bet really small or check. Yeah, I think both are fine. Definitely check calling if he bets. But he doesn't. Value betting the ace five against recreational. The pot size is good. It's not gonna have any ace x with this line. It's gonna have plenty of king highs and then some low pairs. I 
Ace King here facing a three bet. It's going to be a mix for a bet and call. I'm going to choose to call this time. I don't have a strong preference, to be honest. I do think that these three bet ranges, big blind versus cutoff, are a bit more leaner than they should, which makes us have a little bit less fold equity on the four bet. Floating the flop 100%. Against a half pot on the turn, feels like I have to fold, even though I have the gutter. I'm just gonna get bluffed on the river so often here that I don't think it's worth the price. Another ace king. Guy opens mid range to cut off. Button three bats. I think we can just ship this. Pretty sure it's part of the equilibrium strategy. And it makes my life easier. <laughs> that's, uh, that's about it. This guy has to call tens plus. Okay. No, don't do this to me. Okay. Quick queen jack, range bat for small size. Pretty straightforward. We're calling raises here all day. King 10 off. We're going to mix the bets and calls. Nothing happened. Pocket force. Going to go half or check on this flop. I think I should slow play pocket force much at all, but I can slow play hands like 8 6 and 8 4. On the turn. I think three quarter is nice. I can call raises here. He falls. Jack deuce have to call. Flop. I think mostly call any Darius from deuce. I can check raise here. Primarily hands like three deuce, four deuce, five deuce. They're going to be large check raises on this board. Once he goes to X pot. <laughs> and it's a straightforward fold. All right, we're approaching the end of the session here. Let's play these last few hands, calling quits. Hope you enjoyed the session. Hope you learned something new. And if you did, please give the video a like. Now subscribe to the channel. I'll be bringing more and more high value content for you guys here. All right, that's it. See you in the next video.